Ah, good morning and welcome to another bicycle live stream on Saturday, October the 3rd at uh, 7.24am. I've ridden about 36 kilometres, I think, and it's warming up nicely on this spring morning. Let's challenge the conspiracists' true agenda. Let's do a little bit of deconstruction this morning and uh, go into an area that I've spoken about a little bit in the past. But we'll attack it from yet another angle, a slightly different angle, and uh, with the intention of empowering you, because knowledge is power. When you have knowledge, when you understand how things are operating with conspiracists themselves, and, and that they actually have an agenda, then you're empowered to not fall for the absolute bunkum that they peddle like snake oil salesman basically so um, okay so there are three points I want to start off with here relating to a meme that I posted last night and it's a way of understanding helping you to understand conspiracy's true agenda and this is vitally important to know this this is this just helps us keep one step ahead of people that would have you believe things that are completely untrue. So, three points that you need to remember. One, conspiracies themselves are created by selfish people who are unwilling to change their habits, unwilling to change their lifestyle. And this is why conspiracies are created by them. And we'll go into more into that. Uh, they blame, point two, they blame others rather than accept personal change or personal responsibility because to do so would mean they have to change and they're not willing to change. Three, we need to be wise enough to see how obvious this agenda is of the conspiracy theorists and therefore we just don't fall for it then we just, you know it's easy you just go no what you're talking about is rubbish and i can see why it's rubbish it's really you know you'll get a clarity you'll gain an insight as diane says trumpeters are like parrots it seems like they don't have any independent thoughts now very good point let me pick up on that diane about a month and a half ago i shared the meta-analysis um, of psychological research, research on conspiracies and uh, the behaviour of conspiracy theorists. I did a live stream on it. I did quite a number of posts on it. Uh, I think I've done maybe a couple of live streams on it, actually. And it generated a lot of response. A lot of people contacted me. I want to say thank you because it was the most significant psychological assessment I've ever read on, you know, covering 92 peer-reviewed studies of the behavioural characteristics that conspiracists have in common. And at the time when I did the live stream, I said that it didn't surprise me because this was something that I'd already been talking about up to a year previous to this, to um, discovering the official research. So some of those things that came up in the research, and are worth mentioning again, are that there is a higher level among conspiracists of narcissism, mistrust, paranoia, lower analytical thinking, lower levels of education, and I've shared a video this morning from two years ago of yet another psychological assessment of conspiracists and conspiracy theories. And again, commonality of these traits come up. So when psychologists have analysed conspiracists, this is what they've discovered. That's just some of the traits. When they've done peer-reviewed studies, this is what they've discovered. So, you know, as I said at the time when I did the live stream uh, about it, a month and a half ago, I said, 
I'm not making this stuff up. This is the science. So if you want to disregard the science, you are disregarding, in the case of the meta-analysis, 92 peer-reviewed studies. It's impossible to disregard that amount of science, you know. So, okay, let's, let's go back to, to help you understand the agenda of the conspiracists, let's go back to climate change and how it was um, global warming, as it was called, and it started coming through in, say, the 70s and the 80s. People started talking about it. You had Al Gore with his uh, his well-known inconvenient truth. Um, and what Al Gore was trying to do was wake us up to an impending crisis. He was trying to warn us that if we don't change, we're up shit creek. So there is a certain type of person who, as the psychology has proven, has shown, they do not want to be told what to do. They have a over, in a narcissistic way, they have an over inflated opinion of themselves and they think what they believe in is correct and they are completely resistant to change. Why is a conspiracist completely resistant to change? Because it means you actually have to stop doing the things that you don't want to stop doing and start taking personal responsibility. I hope that, just on a side note, I hope the wind's not too strong. Um, so, the, when the climate, or the, as it was called, global warming started to become more talked about in the press, there became an uprising in conspiracy theories to debunk it. You know, saying that global, global warming wasn't real and there was, you know, I'm not even going to go down the rabbit hole of all the excuses that were coming up. The commonality, the common denominator behind all these excuses was a motivation by the conspiracists, a hidden agenda to not want to have to change. We don't want to have to recycle. We don't want to have to make sacrifices. We don't want to have to stop doing what we're doing. So, so rather than look at the message, we'll shoot the messenger by saying that, you know, Al Gore is, in that particular case, has got vested interests or by um, creating some alternative um, ideas, mental speculations that are not scientifically based. They're just mental speculations. But the idea of them is to get you to doubt. You, the person who is not, you know, doesn't have a degree or an education in this area or an expertise in this area, to cast a bit of doubt. And in doing that, the conspiracist has achieved their goal of not having to change. You're like, oh, well, that's fine, I can keep doing what I'm doing now. Think about it in relation to veganism, the exact same thing I've been watching happen for 40 years. Now, it mightn't be fair to call to use the term conspiracist in relation to somebody that doesn't want to stop consuming animal products. However, or stop exploiting animals in other ways. However, the behavior is the same. What you're dealing with is a person that is given the information of, you know, what you're doing to the animals is horrendous and the amount of animals that are being killed and the pollution being created and just how wrong it is. The person presented with that information has two choices. With the aware with information comes the awareness that is connected with it and the responsibility that comes with it. And, and there is a choice that has to be made. Do I go, oh shit, I wasn't aware of this. Uh, I better do something about it. Okay, what can I do to help? Okay, stop consuming animal products. Great, excellent. Th thank you for that. I wasn't aware of that. Um, what's some vegan alternatives? Can you help me, educate me with that, etc. So, fine. That's what we do. That's what one person does. The other person goes, no, 
don't tell me what to do. I don't want to change. Um, you know, it's it's not it's it's not a problem. Yeah, you know, um, you know, uh, people have been doing. You know, caveman was eating it, and um, people have been doing it since forever. And uh, we've got uh, canines, and we're meant to eat meat, and you know. What do you what do you get? You get like a like a micro conspiracy. You get a whole heap of justifications and excuses. Diane says the beliefs are so outlandish you can't even argue with them. Exactly, that actually came up in the uh, meta analysis. Actually, um, it defies logic. Um, in my case, they in my case they leave me speechless. I'm baffled by their thinking. Well, this is it. This is why. Diane, the meta-analysis, which I'll attach to this, again, I'll attach to this um, video, is so crucial to look at the findings of because it exactly, it exactly shows that that's the case. It actually mentions that you cannot argue with them. <laughs> and, 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 and the reasons why are shown in the psychological assessment. You cannot argue because you're trying to argue with, have you ever tried to argue with somebody who's paranoid? Now, I've been in a, I was once in a very tricky situation with someone who has a drug history, who one day just was, I don't know if tripping out's the right word, but their paranoia was just hitting extreme levels. And I'm usually, I consider myself pretty good at calming people down, but this reached a point where in a discussion with this particular person, they were just, I, I wouldn't say, well, they became hysterical. And I realized they were not responding. It became fairly obvious. They were not responding to rational, um, they were not responding to rational conversation, rational belief. They weren't responding to anything basically that I said they're saying I'm saying calm down calm down it's all right calm down and they just no and I thought wow I cannot get through to this person and you know I've got to say that freaked me out that really actually rattled me I was I was quite shaken by that I was quite emotionally uh, <laughs> shocked by that it took quite a while to calm down from that one um, because usually you can be rational with people but when people are in a state of extreme paranoia it's not possible to. Now, I'm not saying that that's what the, the mind of conspiracists is. What I'm saying is the research shows that they have higher levels of narcissism and paranoia, mistrust, um, uh, lower analytical thinking, uh, lower levels of education, etc. So when you get those combination of those, those factors, those, those personality traits in a person, arguing logic with them is very difficult. Um, and you have to be aware of this, which is why I've said many times the only winning move is often not to play the game, because otherwise you're just going in a battle of wits up against a Sicilian. Sicilian? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to quote the line out of the Princess Bride. Anyway, um, anyway, I won't go down that one. But, uh, um, so. The point I wanted to make is just be aware that the bottom line is the conspiracist doesn't want to be told what to do, doesn't want to change. So in order to allow him to keep doing what he wants to do, which is consuming animals, polluting the atmosphere, anything else, he will come up with absurd mental speculations um, around the, the event that's happening and he'll invent conspiracies. We've seen it, you know, most recently with the mask wearing, you know, coming up with, oh, they don't, you know, they don't stop anything and, and, you know, one after another, just, I'm like, where have I heard so many excuses like this before in my 40 years of being vegan? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've heard them from people that don't want to stop eating animals. Oh, you know, you've got to get your protein from somewhere and you've got to get your calcium from somewhere and all that. It's like, and what was their motivation behind that? The person did not want to change. It's the same thinking. And as I say, you do a little bit of research with the links that I've provided, and you see that the psychologists back this.